So I'd like to introduce my friend uh, Leo here. And uh, it was really exciting meeting Leo because Leo has quite a, quite, a, quite a mind for understanding solutions to some of the issues we have today. In this case, affordable housing. So um, Leo's imagination is awesome and he's, he's come up with some really smart ways to solve the issue of affordable housing, community living, um, and I'm just going to let you speak for yourself because I'm sure you could do a better job, but uh, it's a, a good idea to reverse the pyramid of power that we have in our society today. Everybody's always looking to the top for permission. Everybody's always thinking we need to do this. and It's just, we, we feel trapped sometimes because more and more of the new generation isn't able to afford to live or to have a house and what are the kids going to do that are growing up in society today? They want to have a house and it's looking more and more impossible for someone unless they have money inherited. Well, there are solutions and uh, very, very promising, very exciting solutions that we have and I'm going to let Leo introduce himself. Thanks. I think for you. This works. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming this morning, and I'm very pleased to be able to share with you, and yes. I'm grateful for that, and uh, share something about my past and what I've done a little bit in my life, and how possibilities of housing affordability can be possible by working together. So uh, I'll s talk about different things uh, today, and first would be, I'll just share a little bit about myself and then I'll talk about what is a co-op and uh, what type of co-op is the CAS co-op that we can pick up a brochure and we have more in case somebody who did not get one. And they, then lastly, uh, talk about some of the solutions of how can we get there to support a village style community, be it in multi-family housing or be it in a small Strat a lot with mortgage helper type situations, uh, with community gardens that are then together with shared space and so forth. All right, well, I'd like to share that uh, I'm born in the, uh, and raised in the Lower Mainland. Um, my education is in environmental design and urban design. Um, after my studies, I went to Europe for about 15 years. First to Western Europe and then to Eastern Europe after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Um, there was quite I mean, a lot of things that occurred during that time, but it was, certainly was very dramatic, this change of Europe and, and the forming of Western Europe and Eastern I've always been entrepreneurial, first in Europe, um, operating my um, turnkey design and build solutions for multinational corporations. I re then returned to Canada to care for my elderly parents. That was in 2001. And during this time, I realized the problems associated with the healthcare system and care to seniors. Um, I began during this time also uh, my planning and uh, <coughs> land development background. So I've had affordable housing on my mind for quite some time, about 15 years. Um, I moved to the Kootenays recently, uh, to the beautiful nature that we have around us. It's so wonderful and also the co-op culture that exists here. So that's such a fantastic thing. Um, during this time I came to see co-ops as the best to make affordability and quality of life come to fruition. Um, the saying is for co-ops is better together. And that's so true. But we need to have a glue that holds us together. And we can call that glue uh, entrepreneurial and uh, also democratic. But to make things happen, you need a bank account. You need to have bylaws on how to operate and you need to find ways to finance the projects that will occur, in this case, on housing and communities and with land development. 
So let me begin to briefly explain what a cooperative is. And coincidentally, this is co-op week, so it's nice to be talking about that. So a, a co-op exists for the benefit of its members. So that's very important to understand and what are the needs of the members and that's why the group forms together, the co-op, to solve those needs that the members have. So where does a co-op exist in the traditional spectrum of enterprise? So we have government as one type of enterprise, then we have private as one type of enterprise, and that's generally what most people understand. But between those two is social enterprise. And there are many types of co-ops to create this social enterprise. So co-ops issue member and investor shares. And these different types of shares, for example, it could be for consumer co-ops, as you know, including food, food co-op, or like uh, modern equipment co-op, or local credit unions. So there are worker co-ops as well, such as a bakery run by its worker members, or a care co-op run by its owner, healthcare professional workers. A federated co-op is a co-op of co-ops. And more recently is a thing which is known as a multi-stakeholder co-op. That's the more recent hybrid, and this is uh, what the co-op, the CATS cooperative is. So, the Kootenai Affordable Development Services Cooperative, or CADS, issues shares, member shares, but there are three types of members based on how many shares you buy. That, those being the consumers who want to have a housing and community, be it through affordable home ownership or with affordable rentals. The other is worker members. Those are people who will work uh, giving the knowledge how to make these communities and other possibilities like making and working on prefabricated housing to make it more affordable. And then there's also uh, corporate members that be joining as well. So I want to say that when you have these different types of memberships, that means that those membership types will be represented on the board level. The board level is where the month-to-month -month decisions occur. And that's very important that these decisions occur in so-called real time. The faster they can occur, the more innovation and uh, projects come to be realized, as opposed to this traditional market that you try to make something happen and you're estimating what your consumers want. In this case, your consumers are represented what they want. And the other thing is that then the workers, especially millennials nowadays, they want to be empowered at their workplace. How can they uh, make their good ideas happen? How are they listened to? The traditional um, private business is a pyramid structure and it's just decided upon at the top, even though they want to have their worker members empowered to do their best, to be their creative. But I think that the form of cooperatives to make this happen much better, uh, in a better way. So I've said something about the multi-stakeholder co-op model, just briefly. Um, we'll have a chance to ask questions later or talk about those things. But now I'll just get into the issue of how is this going to happen with a multi-stakeholder co-op. So the CADS co-op is like an umbrella that's operating the back of office services from administration to bookkeeping to 
all the other things that are needed. And it brings those three groups together, the consumer members, the worker members, and even corporate members. So all these groups of people are working together to make housing affordable. And there will be a database uh, collected from, as mentioned in the brochure, from be it local towns or municipalities, or where could there be a piece of land that they would be ready to develop to create this housing affordability. But more than the housing affordability, a community. Because is housing affordable only what you pay for the house? What happens when you actually live there over the years? How supportive is that community? How easy is it to do things such as, as a growing family, where can they be daycare opportunities? <laughs> there can actually be in that community daycare opportunities, not just for children, for young families, but for seniors as well. There's a need for adult daycare too. So how can a community then be laid out? What does that look like concretely? Well, I said about single family, uh, strata lots with a smaller house with laneway housing which can be the mortgage help. So a part of that process is first financial education for our consumer members with local credit unions, be it a program from locally here or we can also ask for programs from Van City in the Vancouver area. And of course, their markets and that group as well. So that's uh, one way: is the education first, and then the affordable home ownership, and then with the mortgage helper. So you're getting pre-qualified for a mortgage, and that's uh, say an opportunity for a millennial to do, opportunity for a senior to do, or people to be in in the, in the midlife. But again, it's creating affordable rental as a part of that reasonable sized house, which also creates more affordability. Well, where comes a really big affordable uh, component is in that every project that will be made, in such as uh, a housing uh, complex of, uh, on a piece of land that's then subdivided to make uh, strata lots, is that the, the The group gets together under the banner of a housing developer co-op and that's created by the CADS co-op methods to create it uh, a template by template, one by one. And there can be different groups that are interested to have housing in that community, such as the interest in this group could be focused on creating a housing community in that way. It could be another group who are interested in ma making, for example, products from agricultural products and selling it as a secondary income revenue. So there's just numerous types of intentional communities that can be formed but supported to create a developer co-op and people joining that co-op to actually then create these single family homes with a rental unit that's a mortgage help. And then with common facilities, that makes it more affordable to live there. So, again, we have the umbrella organization with the different membership types and, and other interests from the workers to make other types of enterprise that relates to housing, like prefabricated housing to make it more affordable. And then we, then have a way to always create a look for a particular location that we work with a cooperative landowner, be it a municipal government or be it a private landowner that is ready to work with patient capital to get paid for that land in a over time, not everything up front at one time. So that, that's very important to creating affordability, is to work with landowners. And um, 
no one is suggesting that the land price should be deflated or some unusual low price. Yes, municipalities have that opportunity, but that doesn't mean it has to happen all the time. So when that uh, price is, for example, agreed, the group then begins working on creating then uh, its membership to to get to a certain point. It's just like uh, any developer, private developer, developing project. There's certain payments that go on in time. And the credit unions are understanding how that works, and they w are much more interested in that than in co-op housing, where the co-op together owns the housing. <coughs> because the reality of banks is, in case something goes wrong, what do they want? They want their money back. So that's the reality of the world we live in. So I approach this problem of the cats to live in this reality of the world we are in. <laughs> and I don't think that, to, or to expect money coming from other sources uh, too easily in the future. But working with credit unions and working with other entities like municipalities and cooperating uh, sympathetic landowners, and then also, of course, like the valuable resource we have here, the Columbia Basin Trust. They are looking for funds to invest for community impact funds. So, for example, I mentioned earlier, the first part of the story is to get control of the land when you're making a housing project. And then you start designing on it and you do so-called pre-sellings. That's what a traditional development uh, process is. And in this case, then, the CADS co-op will be looking for sites in different locations and try to match up groups that have certain interests or ideas for intentional community. Again, it comes back to who will fund it, and it's very important, these pre-qualified mortgages, to come into the project to Yes, it's not a larger home, it can be a smaller home that expands over time, but it does have the mortgage helper with it. And again, the credit unions are an important part of this puzzle to give financial education, to help millennials pre-qualify. Look, that $30,000 that went into that nice trailer to tow around with your truck that has two quads on it could be much better as a deposit <laughs> to buying a home in the future. So there's many levels of education that can be occurring to millennials. And then also, for example, when the lane housing would be affordable rentals, it can be for seniors as well, because there's the BC uh, uh, rental assistance that can be applied to that, around $300, $350 per month, so that can be a basis to do your financial planning. How big can the house be with that kind of income, with their financial income of uh, employment, and so on. So these are ways that the CADS co-op will help the consumer members to achieve a home. And yes, there will be opportunities for seniors uh, to also uh, millennials who are wanting to work here, and so do Businesses want to hire them, but there's no place for them to live. <laughs> and this is just an unusual situation that we are placed in now for rural economic development to occur, that it, there needs to be people to work, the talented people, knowledgeable people, for those businesses to be successful. But what's blocking them and often leading uh, young people to leave is there's no place to live in the area. So this rural economic development is a very critical part of this uh, overview. And how do you get then, as I put in the pamphlet uh, in the middle there, about our near-term goals, mentioning those type of things, what can the federal level offer? And there's, I'm very interested to see what the federal level housing policy will be. They're talking about a new one coming out. The previous Trudeau, he was actually instigating a big movement on housing cooperatives. 
But what has happened, it's, it sounded like it would be a good thing that when the land was paid off, but often it's impossible to leverage that increase of land value to do something else because it's just uh, not clear who owns that land specifically. So that's why we're, this model is working on strata corporation being created by the developer co-op. And you can put many different guidelines and bylaws because it's the co-op that uh, is writing those bylaws. It's not a developer writing it in, a, a, in other ways. So it, it's a, a group working that single location or building site that where that single developer co-op is focusing on. So once actually imagining the whole project is finished, that co-op now will be repurposed because its single purpose is to develop a housing project, but it can be by its membership repurposed to then operate the daycare center, to operate the community gardens, to operate a potential secondary um, income stream for people living there or working there, or their primary work income stream. May I ask a yes. question? Sorry to interrupt you, but yes. I kept waiting for you to say something about building permits. Yes, building permits, uh, it's very important uh, to get a building permit uh, and there are many uh, possibilities. One is of course in the zoned areas in the municipality, the other is in the unzoned areas. And that means that those unzoned areas, they, the regional district here that talk, issues building permits, they are concerned in those unzoned areas about the foundations not necessarily so much about the other parts of the building and what could it be and its function be. But, and nowadays with technology that we do have, it's not a problem to get, uh, yes, communications online with satellite, uh, to have common well, to have common uh, processing of uh, gray and black water, and uh, also these other benefits of doing things together. Yes, renewable energy, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, like um, the um, daycare. But it will require uh, people to advocate to the authorities, like the regional district authorities. So when they have their board of directors meeting, let's say that we have lots of members, consumer members, and we have a project interested to happen there, and there's like, of course, there's a lot of no, 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 you can't do this, you can't do this, but they never say what you can do. But anyway, that's my experience in the situation of building permits. So, so Lee, in about yeah. five minutes, yeah. we can start opening up for questions. Does that feel right? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it needs to have it advocacy to occur, to make it happen quickly, to move the authorities. To, that, there's, there, there has to be this component in creating the affordability and creating communities that people want to live in for a specific purpose uh, to be sustainable, of course, being one of them. Yeah. So uh, uh, now just to kind of come to the point almost why I'm here is today is not to um, say, hello, become a consumer member and you're going to get affordable housing. Right now we're building our board, we're looking for expertise to be added to it. So this idea grows together by many different people contributing their know-how and their expertise and their uh, passion towards what can it be to be supportive communities, be it in a village style setting or some multi-family housing uh, setting. What does that look like? What, well, it, for example, municipalities have commercial land. That commercial land can be you know, having retail on one level, the grounds and the, the municipality owning the grounds, but they can sell the air rights above that and put, we could put apartment building of three floors of wood on top. So that would be the actual project on top of the other project working cooperatively with municipalities who are interested to have affordable housing. 
to have people to work there with them for their businesses. So that's just one example. There are many different ways to do it, but we first right now need to build our board. And if you know anybody who you would think would be good to sit on this board, right now we have up to seven positions uh, for directors to be, and the other, right now we have our three, but uh, one is from Vancouver that is living there, and then, so we have five positions we're looking to fill from the community to contribute for this idea to happen. So, welcome to hear your suggestions or recommendations that we will try to then have meetings on a regular basis of just people interested to be a part of contributing to this idea to grow. So we're not asking anybody for money, we're just asking for know-how. And yes, there will be then uh, efforts made to get grants from like Columbia Basin Trust or credit unions and so forth to move forward. So you can read a lot about it in this brochure, I hope you do. and. Uh, Looking forward to your suggestions and comments. We've also got this handout. Mm. Yes. I don't think we had enough, but people can pass theirs around just to look at the, the whole model that Leo's talking about. So I'll quickly just, if you look at this diagram, just say briefly that one side you have about on your left is community investment. And that community investment can come from land or can come from know-how from various groups. Like, for example, we would like to have there in the common center uh, the interior health apply at that location for that housing project. What they've already formed, which is, you know, uh, prevention and chronic illness management. We don't have to spend all our time to try to see how we can be uh, creating these programs. We can modify them, but we can bring them and we can apply them there. And we can apply them not just in one place, but we can apply them in a number of places and the programs become stronger and more effective. That if you have a healthcare professional working for one place, they could also go to many places in this network. So the other part is uh, about affordability here. So these are uh, ways to make the projects here in the middle work. So where it says at the top here now, the top, in the middle, the CATS co-op, and it talks about the different types of co-op membership, and I didn't mention there's also investor shares too, as well as these membership shares. So there are two different types of shares. So, and what is going on, like consulting in the co-op. Then the, the CATS co-op creates the housing development co-op to exist on that one project, that one location, for the sole purpose of making housing for its members. And then here we're building up membership for the co-op members, like the consumer members. <laughs> Quickly that would be done by going from community hall to community hall to community hall throughout the region and making a presentation. That would just be done by a local mailer through the post office for that particular area around the community hall, and we continue to build up consumer members and those who are interested, worker members. So this will take, a lot, it's not an overnight project, it will take time to build up and develop its own culture, but really it's seeking on developing intentional communities in different locations, in the communities, and to make it affordable and supportive as you live there, with your community. I think that a little bit describes it, the left and the right, and then in the middle of things happening. And the bottom then talking about uh, sustainable infrastructure and off-the-grid possibilities nowadays that have become so much more affordable. Great. So we can open it up to questions, and I just wanted to make one comment. I mean, this structure is an amazing structure for people who want to create community and diversity. So this is like, why reinvent the wheel when you can work with the structure that will support you in doing whatever you want to do in your community and using Strato 
which is something that we forget about, the strata licensing that can empower us. So it'll be great when we have questions to sort of get more perspective on this. So uh, you had a question? Yeah, I have several questions. Yes. Um, uh, a quick question, you talked about membership and having these different uh, categories of membership. And uh, the curiosity, of, first of all, is um, one member, one vote. How does that work? That's one piece. My other question is uh, more substantial. And it, um, what relations have you undertaken with uh, Nelson Cares, with the Slocan Valley Seniors Housing, um, with those organizations who are actually doing the work that you're talking about doing here? Uh, some of it, not all of it. And so I'm wondering how you see yourself working together with those groups and um, and whether you've initiated any of those connections yet? Yes, wonderful. That's good questions. Well, first of all, about co-op principles, it must be one member, one vote. A member may have more than one share. In this case, to be a worker member, you need to buy 50 shares. To be a consumer member, you need to just buy one share. And to be a corporate member, you need to buy 10 shares. That creates the different types of membership. But each member, no matter how many shares, has one vote. So the other part now that you mentioned uh, is that, well, I'm very new to the Kootenays. I just really moved here last year. Uh, I bought some land in uh, Passmore, by the Passmore Bridge. Amazing views from up on the bench there. I feel like I'm in heaven every day I look up from my window. But being new, then I, I do have uh, a lack of connections. And that's what the, the, the board members will bring more connections to the idea and, and will find more expertise to put in. Now, talking about societies who have made uh, some kind of affordable housing solutions. It's like reinventing, what well, at least I think, reinventing the wheel each time. If you compare that type of uh, like non-profit uh, area, is that it, it's hard to one, get the money, and number two, uh, it's hard to keep that expertise of knowing how to make buildings together uh, over time. It is an, a, a certain expense. So, yes to working with very senior groups, working with the CARES in what way we can, but our, our goal as the CADS uh, cooperative is to gather this expertise to make housing affordability. And that still uh, the programs that will exist on that housing project, <coughs> be it uh, partly owner, affordable home ownership, be it the other part affordable rentals, the programs there <coughs> will definitely be, as the <coughs> talking about community partnerships, that that's, uh, I think, the basis of uh, the answer that I'll say for that. Yeah. Th thanks very much for a very interesting presentation. Um, I, I lived in uh, Edmonton in a housing co-op for, for quite a few years. I, I served as the president and I saw all the problems and joys and struggles of a co-op. It was very interesting. The co-ops were formed in Edmonton by a similar organization called Communitas, which is a worker co-op. Uh, that provided expertise uh, during the, the, the 60s and 70s co-op boom mm -hmm. and, and provided that service. And I can, make, I can put you in touch oh, with Communitas it. because they, they did exactly what you proposed to do. Mm -hmm. With a different, mo different model, not a membership model, but a worker, a worker co-op. Yeah. I just want to be clear, um, and I think it's useful to know, that I think that the, the the joint strata, the joint ownership of land, or the separate ownership of land, 
uh, is, is often referred to now as co-housing rather than a co-op. The co-op is the commonly held model. It, uh, that's my understanding anyway. And, and, and this would, but uh, I think, uh, and your point, the one point you made that really uh, rang true for me was uh, when you go to lenders, they'll be much more happy with a strata based than with a, a, a commonly held co where they have to try and sort through and yeah, so that that, that makes good sense. I also I'll talk to you later. I have a uh, um, I know Ann Harvey at uh, uh, Nelson uh, Cares and uh, she was very involved with housing in Edmonton as well, and she may be a, a very valuable. There are a number of people who you can talk to, and she may be one who would be a very good person to talk to. Thank you. I think that we need to share resources and, and try to, what is that best expertise of that group compared to trying them to develop new expertise when it can exist in one location. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, not to, you know, especially things like bookkeeping and, you know, uh, especially it's very important that a bookkeeper um, will understand the specific needs of a core, for example, mm -hmm. and you, how to do that. You would be well positioned uh, with this organization if uh, there is a national, and there should be, a national housing program again. And That's what I'm hoping. I'm yes. really hoping that will occur again, uh, uh, some national we, program. We desperately need it. Uh, yes, we desperately need it, uh, and perhaps the politicians desperately need it when you get back in. <laughs> So it's kind of aligning up the two. Yeah. Just so that I'm on the homeless committee, and Ann Harvey is the coordinator of that committee, uh, the CEO, and, and uh, I think it would be good if you came and did a presentation to that group, which meets uh, meets every every uh, month, and I could probably sure. get that set, to set that up because all the all the nonprofits are, are many many nonprofit people people representing nonprofits are there uh, each time and and they, they would be very interesting Nelson cares of course has has been involved in 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 uh, low rental and providing <laughs> low rental housing and building buildings and that yeah. sort of thing mm -hmm. and uh, I I would so so I'll, I'll follow up with with that well, thank you. for you and, and get you invited to one of our meetings. <laughs> mm. I, I would like to share my experience when I went to That's Ontario uh, a number of years ago Joy to Green. investigate the Joy organization Green. called Green Options Green. for Homes. Optionsforhomes.ca is their website. Essentially they're a society uh, but they then create a co-op for a particular location and again it's then traditionally just closed at that point. The, but their co-op, people join that co-op, being a member in this society, that they get emails that, okay, this project is happening, and you can come, and they're helping with financial education, and so forth. And they even have a special program that they work with, that they create a second mortgage. That could be an option in the future, but it's, uh, ag again, it's complicated enough right now where we are. But there will be opportunities to create something in the future that we're hoping for. That, for example, it may have the name the Co-Prosperity Trust that will help to make the business sustainable to invest in and throw money in. It seems to be that when you co-finance, like with some government money and some of your own skin in the game kind of thing, that it, it goes a little more smoother. And even that's the same with Columbia Basin Trust. And, and uh, so on. And uh, then when credit unions come together uh, to give a, f a financing for a construction loan, that, that's also a very big problem, not just the question of the land price. So you need to have a bigger entity come into the picture, and that in the Van City has expressed, and they even did with the, uh, of the building the Kootenai Food Co-op. They're um, syndicating with, as well, Kootenai Savings and the Nelson uh, and District uh, Credit Union that uh, they syndicated. So, the, for example, Van City may put in $10 million because they are not 
as risk averse because they're big enough, but you know the other local credit unions, which Ban City would want them to lead the, the loan syndication, and but they could only put in maybe about two to two, one million dollars in. So, but even if you just to give a scale of what could you do with about twelve million dollars in construction loan, and having the land with some kind of leaseback option that maybe Columbia. And trust invest in that land part, and and uh, somehow a lease back situation. But the other, you would uh, be able to get easily the infrastructure with the, the uh, like 30 units that would have a mortgage helper associated with that. So it's within that ballpark of. A, so you're talking not about just 30 families, but they would have affordable home ownership. But you're talking about as well 30 family units in some way, be it a couple or a single person, that uh, having affordable rental. So the, the two work together that if you wanted to just charge the maximum value of rent, you would have to, you wouldn't be available to come into the affordable ownership category. So there's the, like a, a symbiotic relationship as well as the community support for that sort of thing. So. Um, you talked a little bit about intentional community. I know we have some. Um, what is an intentional? Is it just another word for a co-op? Mm -hmm. And do they exist in an actual city? Oh, there can have be many types of ownership within intentional community, but I think you to say it's an, it's an idea that a group of people have to live that way. Oh, okay. uh, really, that's what it is. I think. And they're a co-op then? Yeah. Uh, no, it can be many different types of ownership. Oh. You know, intentional community could be owned all by almost one person, and they just have made agreements about, you know, affordable rentals or other type of things. And, and you can do it in the city. I, I have a, another question too. Mm -hmm. As a former real estate broker and having built my own house, I'm basically more interested in who buys the land, who finds the land, and, and uh, builds up a community on it. Yeah, so the, the CADS uh, co-op will be looking for land opportunities. Um, so the land opportunities I mentioned, one is obvious the, the various municipalities, because the mm -hmm. municipality is theoretically owned by the citizens of that municipality, and they should then theoretically you know, support affordable housing. But it's a question about how much money they have, as we know. But if we can find ways to not cost them any money, like give you the air rights about commercial uh, land uh, that uh, they own, then it's another opportunity that will move much more smoothly through the process. And not only that, we need to densify in certain areas to be able to have uh, services like daycare. Um, like 30 apartments on top of uh, commercial space that, uh, that's uh, owned by the, uh, the municipality. The other thing to, to be creative about the land too that will be purchased uh, from private individuals, like yeah. perhaps that family, if they got paid the value of their land all at one time, they'd be like, oh, we're paying lots of money in taxes. But if they understood their needs over the next years, and their transition from uh, end of life and so forth and then to their uh, children. Well, yeah, that they, that money permits and all that sort of thing too. We can't get that for any piece of land. I understand. I spent uh, about 10 years getting uh, <laughs> just a neighborhood plan to be made well, yeah. in the township of Langley. And that was uh, a lot of time to not make something bad, but to make the first sustainable neighborhood plan in the township of Langley. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, also I was participating with United Way even to make the first Langley seniors group there starting in Langley as well. So mm -hmm. there, there's just, yes, getting the land in some way first to control it, you might make a small payment from funds raised by the co-op uh, developer group membership, uh, it would, would 
maybe five thousand dollars, maybe less, maybe a little more. But and the point is that you to talk to the authorities about that land, you have to have authority that the owner has given you authority to talk to them to then negotiate the building permit. But before even that, I would talk with the regional authority and say, look, where do you want development in the Kootenays? Should it be along here? Should it be near there? And what are the opportunities? Where are you going to give us the roadblocks? You know, So that's got to get straight first at the front end. And that's uh, also making presentations to the board of the regional district, their board of directors, and then uh, advocating with the whole room of members. They're not just one person or two talking. Um, I think, Leo, your question is really good in that it comes back to what is the purpose today is that the CADS is a development services co-op and we need, need expertise on that co-op. Someone like yourself. <laughs> who knows these roadblocks, who knows the real estate market, yeah. and knows the area and what's available here and has ideas to share and a passion to share. Um, so it's not about what does Leo think and how is he going to do it all. It's mm -hmm. about gathering a group of experts yeah. who have a passion about this to go forward together. Yeah. I just want, I want to say, I, oh, we have a couple more time for a couple more questions. We're getting close. Um, I just want to say that, that there's something super exciting about this that we can realize is that this model offers a great diversity in, in human potential. If I want to have a spiritual community of spiritual values, metaphysical school, or if I want to have a whole community that's based on getting elderly together with the younger generation, or anything you can imagine, any kind of community you want to create, there is that diversity that we have to honor in this world. <laughs> This structure, we connect to the CADS co-op members and we need the legal fees, we need to understand the building codes. All this stuff that's so daunting and intimidating gets taken out of the mix and we just consult. And we're like, okay, I need a lawyer to figure out this and this. All the expertise is there in your interest. And if I'm creating a spiritual community, this, this, the, the membership co-op will connect me to the landowners that are interested in only selling their land to somebody who wants to create a spiritual community. So you could get the land a lot less because there are ethical people that only want to give their land to people that have that interest, right? I can speak to that. Please, yes. We had, when my mother passed, when she was preparing to get rid of the land and move on, she would not sell to the developer, period. Any corporate interest? <laughs> she sold for less money to someone that she knew was going to be a family recreation site. Exactly. People have 